Hey Chemistry, this is KJ here with 5.02 Law of Conservation of Mass. So think about a campfire. There are two parts to a chemical reaction. There are the substances you begin with and the substances you end up with. Think about the wood burning in a campfire. The wood burns with the help of oxygen. Wood and oxygen are the reactants of this chemical reaction. These two substances react together. When they react, they form a new substance ash and the smoke as well. The ash and smoke in this chemical reaction are two of the products. Now, there's some key words in this slide. You may have noticed when I was reading, so reactants are what react. See the words right in it. React. Reactant. And then what they produce is the product. And we can look at the marshmallows, too. They started out as regular marshmallows. They had a chemical reaction. Then they get black on the outside. So the product would be the slightly burnt marshmallow, and the reactant would be the original marshmallow. All right, so let's get down to it. Reactants. This is a big vocabulary word that we're going to use for the rest of the year. Write it down. Reactants. The chemicals you start with. The chemicals that react. Again, I expect that you hit pause when you need to and take the notes that you need to. So reactants, the chemicals you start with, the chemicals that react. Underline the reactants. So we have three difluorides plus aluminum yields aluminum fluoride. So the arrow, you might have noticed, I didn't say arrow or equals, but I used the word yields. Now you've probably heard of this word when you're driving, right? Like a yield sign. In that case, it means slow down. In this case, yield means to make or produce. So what would the reactants be? Well, the reactants would be those. The reactants are before the arrow. It's what you start with. So it would be the three difluorides plus the aluminum. It would be both of these. That's what I started with. Okay, underline the reactants down here. This time, the reactants are on this side of the arrow. Yes, arrows can point to the left because some reactions reverse. Some reactions, they go this way, and then once you have all of the products made, it actually turns around and turns back into the original reactants. All right, so it can point to the left. Just like in math class, I know everyone likes to write the x on the left, x equals 3, right? But you can also write 3 equals x. You can write 3 plus 2, or... It would have helped if I had written these differently, huh? Or 2 plus 3, right? They're the same thing. They both equal 5. It doesn't matter. Same thing. Arrows can point to the left. Whatever is before the arrow is reacting, so that's your reactant. All right, products. The chemicals you end with, the chemicals that are produced. Product, produce. Yes, this is another very important vocabulary word. Write it down. So circle the products. So the products are what the arrow points to. I would write this down too. Products are what the arrow points to. In this case, it's the aluminum fluoride. And again, the arrow is pronounced yields, yield as in makes. So reactants yield products. Or products are yielded from reactants. So we like to think of this way as kind of being backwards. It does happen, but this is like 10% of the time we write it like this. 90% of the time we write it in here. I just don't want you to think that, oh, reactants are on the left. No, not always. Okay, so reactants are first. They're what's reacting. Products are what is produced. It's at the end. It's what the arrow is pointing to. The arrow points to products that are produced. All right. Next vocabulary word, law of conservation of mass or law of conservation of matter, same thing. So again, we have our reactants yield products. The law of conservation of mass states that in a chemical reaction, mass cannot be created or destroyed. It states that the mass of the reactant in a chemical equation is always equal to the mass of the products. So if I say that I have 10 grams of reactants, how many products do I have? How many grams of products? 10. That's it. Now, if you're thinking, okay, that's really easy. Yeah, but remember, 
it's not always that simple when you look at it. When you think of fire, you start out with a log of wood from a maple tree, and then you burn it. Well, after it's burnt, you have this little pile of ash. So it looks like there's less, but you have to include the smoke and the gases that came off too. And if you would take the weight of all that, it would equal the weight of the original piece of maple wood that you burnt. Okay, so that's where it gets a little tricky to think about. All right, so again, law of conservation of mass, reactants yield products, the law of conservation of mass states that in a chemical reaction, mass cannot be created or destroyed. You better have that written down. You need to know it. It states that the mass of the reactants in a chemical equation is always equal to the mass of the products. And you do not need to know this scientist's name. In fact, I forget it every year. He's not one of our top five most important scientists, but eh, how he did it was pretty cool. So Antoine Lassierre in the mid 1700s carefully measured the mass of a material before and after it burned. He collected all the gases produced too. By collecting the gases and other byproducts from the reaction and then measuring the total mass of all the products, Lozier showed that mass is conserved in chemical reactions. Conserved means keep, keep the same. So the mass stayed the same. The mass of the reactants equals the mass of the products in every chemical reaction. You should also have this written down. All right, so to summarize, get that out of my way, there you go. Mass is conserved in chemical reactions. Again, conserve, they mean keep the same. Mass is conserved or kept the same in chemical reactions. Chemical reactions involve reactants that yield or make products. Chemical reactions can be expressed as equations illustrating the combination of one or more reactants to form one or more new substances called products. In other words, we can write a chemical equation. Woohoo! And I can say the mass of all the hydrogen and oxygen gas is going to be equal to all the mass of all the water it produced. In a chemical reaction, the mass of the products is always equal to the mass of the reactants. This may not always be obvious in a chemical reaction like with the fire. Sometimes mass is lost to the surrounding as gases. Now they say lost, they shouldn't have said lost, it's still there. Um, maybe like it kind of escaped or it spreads out, but if you collected the gases, you would get the total masses to be the same. Careful observations and experimentation can prove that mass is conserved or kept the same. This concept is called the law of conservation of mass. So chemical reaction consumes reactants that become products. And they have the same or equal mass. Chemical reactions form products. Okay, And you can turn the equation around. And as I said before, you can put the products on the left. It's whatever the arrow points to. The arrow points to the products. Most of the time we see it in this format. All right, that and the law of conservation of mass is all that you need for this lesson. Um, when you're done with your notes and reviewing, go ahead and take the quiz.